Now, welcome to another edition of News from Naboo, the weekend ramble edition, which means we're going to pick a topic and just kind of go with it. And so what is our topic going to be this week? We're going to kind of talk about the Star Wars is for kids excuse that gets brought up a lot by anyone who says Star Wars fans are being haters or they're taking it too seriously and all of that kind of stuff. (laughs) Which is an argument I get all the time. Anytime I kind of nitpick or dissect or look too deeply, I do get that. You're taking it too seriously. It's for kids. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to always make sense. Look at the first movie. It was for kids. Lucas has said it's for kids. Yeah, I get that all the time. And I think what's kind of irritating about that, the first thing I find irritating about that actually is there's this implication that if something is for younger viewers, it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be consistent as if children will not be able to watch something and you know tell like this doesn't make sense or this isn't very good. I really don't understand that argument simply from that perspective of what do you mean that it doesn't have to make sense if it's for children? Don't we want our children to, you know, watch good and consistent stories and and all of that? You'd think of anything you'd want things to be that way. I mean, because kids can notice and get upset about differences and stuff like that as well when their favorite characters get replaced in shows. Kids notice and things. So to say it's for kids and then, you know, if you make a a show and then you totally change their favorite character, you don't think they'll notice? Well, yeah, I mean, I just, I I don't understand that argument that, like I said, just because it's for a younger viewer, just because your your intended audience might be younger doesn't mean it has to, that's an excuse for it to be bad or to be sloppy writing. I just, like I said, I get that one all the time and it was... It was very strange when I was, as you probably know, I was pretty adamant against The Last Jedi. I made plenty of videos kind of discussing it and critiquing many different aspects. And it was always strange to me how some people would say, you know, you're kind of missing the point of that movie. It's it's it has a very profound meaning and it's a very deep meaning and it's, you know, it's a very intellectual film and all these things. And I would have other people arguing like, why are you tearing this movie apart? It's for children. It's, that was kind of the strangest thing, you know, that came out of the whole Last Jedi kind of debate or argument well, you, for me. You can't have your cake and eat it too, I guess. Well, That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, we have to, I mean, you have to decide if, you, if you're going to want to argue against, you know, people arguing against Star Wars or critiquing it. You have to, you have to decide if you want it to be this profound thing that has, you know, true meaning behind it and true consistency. Or if it is just going to be some frivolous thing for kids that we just throw people with lightsabers on screen or whatever it is and it has no real meaning. Like you kind of have to pick one or the other and stand behind it. Right, and if they're going to argue that Star Wars is for kids, why do they still include the violence? Well, yeah, I mean, that's another thing I think that's interesting because one of the things that I've seen people really, really like about the Kenobi series, for example, was in the third episode. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. But in the third episode, you know, we see Vader, you know, basically snapping necks and doing some pretty horrible things, so... For kids. Yeah, for, for kids, And so, you know, that's just a good example of, like, is your argument here this is for kids? Or is your argument that, you know, the kids are old enough, you know, the the, the audience is old enough, you know, because granted, yes, younger viewers do watch Star Wars, but they're old enough to understand, you know, that violence in context, that it's not okay to snap people's necks, but it's it's part of the story. And so if you expect them to understand that kind of complexity, do they not want complexity elsewhere in the story, too? One would assume that they would. I mean, then the other arguments and stuff I can hear. If if Star Wars, if the full on films, if the Kenobi show, if it's for you know for kids, why do they have a Star Wars Kids channel? Well, yeah, I mean, it's all for kids. So why aren't the regular films and stuff on that channel? Yeah, why were instead all... they're making content deliberately for younger viewers as well? Yeah, why are all the sequel trilogy films PG thirteen? If your intended argue, you know, if your intended audience isn't meant to be kind of a slightly older and more mature audience, right? Not to mention, you do have. We, we let's be honest. Like the, you know, maybe Lucas's original idea was to make something for, as he said, he, you know, his kind of his original idea was to make something for like, you know, twelve to thirteen year old boys, a kind of fun, you know, adventure film, like you know, old Buck Rogers, you know, all those other Flash Gordon from back in the day, and at the same time to kind of maybe reinvigorate some spirituality in children and you know make them see that you know life is not just about the self, but you know, serving something greater than the self. So. You know, there is an original intent and meaning behind Star Wars. It wasn't just about, you know, Mm -hmm. him making something for kids and to be meaningless. So uh, that's another thing I I think people forget is, you know, with something like Kenobi, like, where where is the deeper meaning in the show so far? Well, it's about, well, I guess you can argue that the deeper meaning of the show right now is a a man who's lost faith and has to regain it. Yeah. 
And that's a pretty important thing, isn't it? Absolutely. So don't we want that journey? Don't we want children who watch this to really kind of understand that journey? Isn't it important that it kind of makes sense? And that if you're a kid who's seen the prequels and you've seen the original trilogy and you've seen Clone Wars and you know Kenobi and he's your favorite character, if you want to see this part of his story, shouldn't it have meaning? Shouldn't it be consistent? Shouldn't it, you know... I, again, I just I, I fail to understand the argument that it's for kids, so it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to have meaning or anything behind it. When it's very important for children, I would say, especially the the teen years and you know that preteen kind of age, to really get meaningful stories, to see something like a an Obi Wan who is a somewhat broken man regaining his faith and. Well, think you know. about it in the terms of other fandoms as well. If these the, the kids who are watching these are going to be the next generations of writers and filmmakers. You know, think about it in terms of, um, I know she can be controversial, but uh, Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling, yeah. If they decided in the seventh movie to change parts of Harry's backstory to suit what they wanted to tell, do you think fans would be happy? Do you think people who grew up loving these would be happy? No. Instead, they stuck to their source material. They did take some loose interpretations here and there of the source material, or leave some things out that fans could argue are very important but they did try to stay as true as they could to the source material and the areas that people are upset about are generally the areas that divert from the source the books and i mean these weren't written 40 years ago or more like star wars was but they have to follow the same basic principle when you adapt shows these days you want to remain true to the source material to make your audience happy the people who are in love with the product that you've they've been enjoying for years. I mean, Star Wars has been enjoyed for years and years and years. And those fans have grown and they've aged and they've they're now they've now diluted Star Wars into a fine wine at sometimes. <laughs> well, so give them a high quality product that is still something everyone will enjoy, but isn't going to turn off people who've been watching this and idolizing these movies for years yeah i think it's a difficult balance to make something that is you know definitely appeases that older generation because that's what that's what these people who always say oh star wars is for kids are forgetting like you think disney believes that you think disney isn't interested in cornering that adult market who's been watching it for decades no they absolutely want those fans they want their money let's be let's be completely honest they're making star wars yes Mm -hmm. they want to get new fans involved they want the kids to watch it and get involved but they want to they want those old fans to keep spending their dollars Absolutely. on Disney. So it's such a strange argument when you say, oh, it's this frivolous thing for kids. Well, no, it's it's not intended to be. That you would, If you would get an honest answer from any Disney exec, they're going to tell you our target market is probably those adults, those parents who have kids who can indoctrinate them into Star Wars for them. Their target audience is keeping those fans happy and keeping that cycle going. Mm-hmm. So, again, I, just from that standpoint, it's another just strange argument to make that oh it doesn't matter it matters very much i feel like nowadays they just try and dumb things down in a way for kids not realizing kids they need to be challenged mentally as well Uh, another great example you were watching sailor moon crystal with me i was yes new re-adaptation that's supposed to be more true to the original manga works and i was getting annoyed you remember i was getting annoyed i'm like why is it nobody like seems to ever get hurt or anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I showed you some of the original stuff that I watched as a child, and I mean their uniforms get torn up. They're laying on the ground, bruised and dirty, dirty and, yeah. because they fought and it's hard, and it and it helps you to illustrate that 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 is it's dangerous. It's not all gumdrops and roses. And then the new show just didn't capture that what they're doing while, yes, they're fighting evil and cute costumes and their magical girl transformation. At the same time, it's work and it's dangerous. And they want you to understand that as well. That there's consequences, right? And the that's, new show kind of skimped out on that a little bit. Yeah, that's an important thing. I mean, part of the reason you you know you want children to watch a, a good story, a good solid story, is because you want them to understand a life lesson that there are consequences in life. That you know you're going to get dirty and beaten, beat up and battered and bruised sometimes. And you know, again, I, I I don't understand the argument that it doesn't have to be consistent. That we don't have to worry about you know we're just going to throw any old fluff in front of children and that's fine. When even from a young age, we should be teaching children the lessons they're going to need their whole life. Mm-hmm. I agree. All right. Well, I guess that's all we got for you this time. Hopefully you found this topic interesting. If you made it this far, perhaps you did. So why don't you take to the comments below and tell me what you think about this? Is this a solid argument? Does it not matter? 
the Star Wars for kids and we shouldn't worry about consistency and we're just being too nitpicky. Or does it matter? Is it important that they hold to the canon? Is it important that these stories are consistent and make sense and teach us some life lessons? Or the younger generations in particular some life lessons? Whatever you think, leave those comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.